this is not a normal video I would make. Um, <laughs> I, I usually make fun stuff, right, about like Titanfall 2 and Halo and things like that. Those are my two videos I've literally made. What am I saying? But I, I guess since I don't have that many subs, I wanted to kind of uh, branch into something else and try something more serious. And uh, this essay is more, and it's not even an essay, it's just a bunch of thoughts because it's, again, unscripted. I just want to be real with this one and I just kind of want to talk. Um, and it's kind of about November and Movember and men's health, mental health, that is, and some of the relations between that and video games and how through video games, I was able to get over my problems and how they help in general with escaping your issues in the real world, I guess. Um, I'm going to take you back to 2007. That's whenever Halo 3 drops, right? Halo 3 is the biggest deal in 2007. Um, Modern Warfare drops, I think, around the same. I think it's 2007 as well. Um, this is a good good year for gaming. I played both of those all the way through and loved them so much. But Halo 3 is the one that everything was leading up to. My entire life was leading up to this. Now, um, I will say I was in kind of a weird place when I was in fifth grade. Like, my parents were separated, and I was always, like, kind of not sure what I was wanting to do. And I was always thinking I was, like, a problem for other people. I didn't have a lot of friends. My best friend Devin at the time uh, had a 360, and me and him had always been playing Halo 2 all the time. I could always go over to his house on the weekends. I was basically a part of his family, and I hope I still am. I, I know we, we don't talk near as much, Devin, but I love you, dude. Like, I, we were so close, and I'm glad that we're still close today, um, to in a sense. But when Halo 3 dropped, um, I don't know if we were both in the same mindset of, like, trying to escape our problems and stuff because we weren't the popular kids we were the we were the weird kids like the awkward ones he had a Devin had a crush on the like most popular girl in, in the class named Delaney or something I know I'm just like definitely like letting that out it's fine um whatever things have things have changed this is, this is back in like fourth fifth grade but um <laughs> whenever Halo 3 drops I go over to his house and I think it's like 6 p.m or so is uh, when we get there maybe it's like five and we play from that point we play Halo 3 the campaign from the start all the way till about the arc. And at this point, I think we were playing on like heroic, so it was pretty tough. Uh, we, for us at least, we were pretty young, right? But we play all the way till about the arc and he gets super tired. It's like 2 a.m. and he's like, all right, I'm, I'm gonna go to bed. And I'm like, okay, cool. So I stay up, obviously, because I'm, I'm too invested. I, I cannot escape this world because it's like, I've been reading the books at this point and <laughs> I play the next three levels just on my own, um, just in this little, like the man's den in his house, like all alone. He goes to bed and I just remember finishing at like 5 a.m. and I'm just sitting there and I'm just like wanting more. And like it definitely ends on a note that's good. Like it ends like, you know, Halo 3 ends. Halo 3 ends. It ends with Master Chief floating back to his pod. He sleeps in it and he says, wake me when you need me. It should have ended there or they should have like had him come back. But as a support role, all this new 343 stuff is okay. I hope Infinite's good. But the point is, whatever. It's not the point of the video. <laughs> but when it ended, I was just sitting there and I was like that's it that's the trilogy and this, this was this is like the big thing and then I started it again <laughs> and then I played until about like 7 a.m uh from the beginning and I got about probably to I want to say the end of crow's nest or uh maybe right after I forget the name of the mission um after that you know it's the one with the warthogs and stuff I remember I remember each layout um but I got to that point and, <laughs> and I guess I kind of led into some of my stuff in my later years right um all those good experiences with halo 3 and just escaping in that world led to me uh, being able to kind of escape my problems when I got older. Um, so whenever I hit about 20, I became, I believe the term is a hypochondriac, which is you fear death, um, which is, you know, pretty normal. A lot of people go through that at some point. I mean, everyone's mortal. <laughs> Nobody is immortal. Um, and it's it's just something you can't escape. And it's, it's freaky. Like, it's, that's why it follows is such a scary thing to me, because I think about, you know, death is something that's always there, no matter what. But if you think of it that way, it'll freak you out way too much. So don't, don't think of death as this constant thing that's creeping up on you. Um, but that's another topic for another thing, another video, whatever conversation. The point is this, this is with video games. Um, basically, whenever I was freaking out, I, I didn't know what to do. And, and I, I remember being happy playing Halo 3. And so whenever I was freaking out a lot, I, I looked at my Xbox One one night and I was just like, my hands were shaking. I was like sweating in the bed. I was scared. I didn't have anyone to talk to. And I, I did. I had roommates, but I just didn't. You don't when you're in that state of mind, you don't want to bring that on other people because you're vulnerable. You know, you don't want people to see you like that. And I, I, it's hard. But, you know, hear me out. Sometimes it's best to do it. But in my case, I saw my Xbox in my messy ass rooms. I hadn't left. There was like greasy food everywhere, just like all over the place. It was super dirty and I didn't, had no motivation. I turned on that Xbox and it was an Xbox one. Um, I remember getting the Master Chief Collection and just being so excited about having Halo 3 at all times. Didn't really play it that much until this happened. But I heard that, ba-ding, which is, you know, the Xbox One sound. And that still hits me to this day. And I remember just getting into Halo 3, playing the mission The Covenant, and just playing it over 
and over and over and over and over, just playing it over and over again to the point where I just, I, I remembered what it was like to be happy again. And it sounds so stupid to put it that way. But whenever I was in that tank driving up to those uh, hornets to jump in and take out those scarabs, I was a fifth grader again in that tank doing the same thing. I remember trying to mimic things that I had done when I was in fifth grade and it was just subconscious. My brain was just doing that because I remember playing that mission so many times when I was younger and it just brought me back to this time where I was not worried about anything anymore. And and I, I will say the second that I got out of Halo 3 uh, after that, it all rushed back in and hit me. But something happened though. At this point, I was like, okay, so that helped me escape. Why don't I try other things that I you know enjoy doing? Which was you know creating things, drawing, writing music or whatever else and then that also related to playing other video games so at this point i would find escape in older games i never like thought i would play right like dark souls for instance hated the game itself but dark souls 3 whenever i played that with uh, zach and zach my two roommates zach squared it's pretty cool i once again felt that escape and it wasn't just for like nostalgia it was because i was with people and i was doing things it was so cool to me because i would also play online games with other people i played like battlefield 4 or at the time it was Battlefield 1 is what came out and that was like the big one that we played. But once again, I played with my friends and I was able to kind of forget that I was going through those issues in the first place. You know, people talk about you have to connect with people whenever you're going through depression and anxiety and stuff and you want to talk to those people and be with people. Well, I didn't necessarily have to be with people. I was with people, but I was in a virtual world shooting bad guys with my friends and that's how I was venting my problems out. I was, I was still with people, but I wasn't necessarily with those people. I, I've said that like four times, but you get the point. <laughs> um, and, and it kind of also, I, I guess that related to whenever I would play Minecraft whenever I was like 14. Me and Zach, um, Zach Roberts, Zach Jarrett was a different guy. Zach Roberts, um, best friend of mine ever. Uh, he's married, went off, does his own thing now. You know, he still, still makes time for old Hunter or whatever. I was his best man, just saying. Kind of a big deal for me. <laughs> but the point is, um, we got back into Minecraft around this time as well. And that brought back uh, so many memories. So whenever we were like, when, I, when we were like 13 or 14, I remember it was cool experiences where I'd go to his house because um, most of the time I was grounded from like bad grades and stuff. I couldn't have a laptop or a computer to play Minecraft on. I'd go to his place and I would use like one of his old little extra Dells that he had. Sometimes his brother, Josh. Thank you, Josh or Andrew. Andrew, sometimes his two brothers would lend the computer to me and let me play with him. And it was so intense because we had to be logged on past 10 p.m. is what the time was. The internet would shut off like it would lock out at 10 p.m. So if your computer shut off, you couldn't get back on the internet. You had to be connected all the time on that server. Otherwise, you were done. So like we would have to find this server and just lock in. It was it was the most intense thing ever. And once we locked in, we were in that server for like six hours and then we went to bed super late, like 3 or 4 a.m., right? But some of the best memories I have are just we, maybe it was because we had to try so hard, right? And it was so intense trying to get into those worlds just that that was everything to us um those worlds were literally everything to our existence was trying to build like a good house and then like get our faction level up and stuff and like you know be the big boys on the server and it, it was an escape we just wanted to do like all the fun stuff that you couldn't do in the real world <laughs> and we got to do those things you know and playing minecraft again whenever i was like in my 20s with him in this this same place you know around the same time when i was going through all my issues brought me back to that time as well and I was with my friend, I was 14, I didn't have any problems anymore. And it, it was just, I can't describe how euphoric it was because it brings you back to happy times and you just, for a moment, you just feel like there's nothing that can mess with you anymore. And I, maybe I was living in the past, maybe I, I should have like dealt with my problems head on, but doing that helped me completely forget about all of the bad stuff that was out there in the real world and how I could probably, I could probably die in a horrible car crash or get shot in a shooting or something random, right? But it didn't matter because I was with my homie and we were building an awesome obsidian fortress. <laughs> I, I guess the point is playing Minecraft again during that time just made me feel something again. Um, and, and it wasn't just Minecraft. We played Overwatch and that was also with my friends. And <laughs> as time progressed, um, playing all of these video games, Battlefront, Battlefront 2, I cannot forget that. Oh my gosh. Okay, so it's it was garbage when it first came out, but that was like one of the few games that me and Zach would just like, because we're huge Star Wars fans we would lose ourselves in that game. That was before the spawn system came out too. That was when like it was completely effed, right? You remember those early days, you OG players out there? Yeah, no, it's, it's a much better game now, but back two years ago, holy butt cheeks, it was bad, dude. It was it was tough trying to get through that. But that game, man, it got me through some tough times, that's for sure. It's in the top. Grenade out! We both need nice. Let's get in there, lads. Oh, oh got him. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> that sound he made. Um, 
but the point I'm trying to make, um, cause I'm, I'm going to go ahead and start trying to close this out a little bit. Cause I've been going for a while is through all of those problems, uh, trying to find other experiences and other video games. It one, one, it broadened my taste a little bit with video games. And two, it also showed me that I wasn't alone anymore because I got on discord servers where other people were struggling with the same problems and they were doing the exact same thing to escape their problems. If you are using video games to try and make yourself forget the issues outside, don't worry. That's completely fine. People are going to tell you that that's <laughs> the wrong thing to do, that you need to just get out and man up and deal with it. Well, no, okay? Because it's not as simple as just manning up and dealing with it. Your problems are completely valid, whatever you're going through right now. Um, whether it be like a tiny, like, <laughs> that sounds stupid. If it's a heartbreak, for instance, right? Like if you're going, if you have depression and anxiety and you have a breakup with a girl or a boy, obviously it's going to, I guess, how do I, how do I put this? It's going to make it a lot worse. It's going to multiply that problem by like 30,000. And it's going to feel like the end of the world whenever you lose that person, because losing people, especially like that is the worst feeling in the world. There, there's some pretty bad things, but it's like getting stabbed in the chest by a chainsaw. I think Nikki Jakey once described heartbreak as a table saw in your stomach, just, just going at it. Yeah. It's what, it's what it feels like. And it's way worse when you're going through that kind of stuff. But just remember that your problems are valid, even if it is something like that small. Um, if you're worried about death, that's also valid. Whatever your issue is, don't let people tell you that it's not that big of an issue and you can just keep going because sometimes you need a break. And me just isolating myself for a few days and then just playing Halo 3 was enough to get me out of that issue. And if that's what you need to do, do it. Don't, don't feel like you can't do that. It's not unhealthy. Um, so yeah, uh, whatever you're going through, I hope it gets better and just know that it will get better because people care about you and i mean if, if it's not your friends in the real world or family i'm sure you've got some online friends that care about you we've, we've got an old discord server and all my online friends but i got a buddy in canada named jack he's a cool guy you know we still keep in contact all the time and it's like y you still have a lot of people through games or through the real world that would miss you if you were gone and they want you to feel better never feel like you can't give your problems to other people because that's the point of having friends they're supposed to be there for you i, I made it through my problems and you can too Thanks for listening to this super long video about some of the games that helped me and some of the ways I got over my problems in the first place. And I, I know it's not structured very well, but it's something I just kind of wanted to be real with. You know, I wanted to kind of just let my heart out there and hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, the next one coming up is going to be a little more serious. I do. I'm still going to do that siege video. I know I haven't been on in a while. I have been pretty busy with life and stuff, but now I've got a studio here that I can use at the station, which is kind of nice. It's a long story sort of allowed to do this, I guess, but I'm just not going to be real public about it as I put it on YouTube. Yeah. But, um, anyways, uh, thanks for watching dog. I almost said dog bless. I'm not Nikki Jakey. I, I, <laughs> by the way, great guy. Uh, check, check his videos. Out. I don't know. I don't know him personally, but he's awesome. Um, from this is the newbie noob signing out and I uh, hope you guys have a great, great rest of your month and 